top 10 favorite creationist arguments. Number one. Carbon dating isn't accurate to determine the age of the Earth. Well, perhaps that's why carbon dating isn't the preferred method for dating rocks and fossils. In fact, there are a great many methods of radiometric dating that accurately measure the decay of radioactive elements in rocks, meteorites, and fossils. And those methods can confidently measure the age of planet Earth to be 4.5 billion years. Number two, you can't prove evolution. As opposed to proving the young earth theory from primitive anonymous documents? Well, actually, man has unlocked the world of genetics to reveal that all living things have and do evolve, and that similarities exist between the DNA of plants, animals, and humans alike. Evolution is observable, provable science. To quote the famous evolutionary biologist Stephen Jay Gould, creationist critics often charge that evolution cannot be tested and therefore cannot be viewed as a properly scientific subject at all. This claim is rhetorical nonsense. Number three, if man evolved from monkeys, why do we still have monkeys? This is like asking, if America was colonized by the English, why do we still have England? Next question, please. Number four, the human eye is too complex to have evolved. This argument is also known as irreducible complexity. This gross oversimplification ignores creatures like the single-celled Euclina, which have evolved antenna for light. Mollusks and jellyfish have evolved varying grades of vision. Plus, consider this, the human eye is more poorly constructed and much less acute than the eye of the octopus or the great horned owl. Did God care more about the design of the horned owl than his own children? Number five, atheism is actually a religion. Indeed, much like not collecting stamps might be called a hobby, or not smoking might be called a habit. Number six, Oh yeah, well, Scientist X believes in God. Well, that's nice. So did icons like Copernicus, Kepler, and Galileo, who also lived during the time of dirt floors, bleeding sick people to cure them of illness, and burning witches at the stake. Sir Isaac Newton was a believer and theologian. He was also an alchemist. Did Newton's groundbreaking research on gravity and the laws of motion also prove his belief that metals had magical powers and could be combined to make gold? Cherry pick all you want. The fact is, 93% of the members of the National Academy of Sciences reject the concept of God. That's not just a majority, it's an overwhelming majority. In fact, this is just a sampling of the reputable scientific organizations that reject intelligent design and support evolution by natural selection. Seven. So you're saying that everything happened by chance? No. Well, chance certainly plays a part in the evolutionary cycle, but natural selection promotes non-random change of specific desirable traits over time. Living organisms didn't just pop into existence by chance, but they did evolve over millions, sometimes billions of years. Number eight. America was founded as a Christian nation. Actually, the U.S. Constitution never mentions God, and the mention of religion in Article 6 and the First Amendment served to separate religion from government altogether. The words, in God we trust, weren't printed on American coins until 1863, after a religious surge during the Civil War. Paper money didn't have it until 1957. The words, under God, weren't even in the original Pledge of Allegiance. They were added by Congress in 1954. And many of our founding fathers were either deist or ambivalent about the Christian God, including Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, James Madison, John Adams, Thomas Paine, and even George Washington. Number nine, the second law of thermodynamics. 
We love this argument because it is thrown out so flippantly and with so little understanding. In a nutshell, the second law of thermodynamics says that systems must become more disordered over time. So, complex living cells and organisms couldn't have come out of basic inanimate chemicals. In other words, more time means more chaos. What creationists fail to mention is that this law only works in a closed system where no energy or matter leaves or enters. The Earth is not a closed system. It receives outside heat and light from our sun's nuclear fusion, fueling simple organisms so that they can become more complex by consuming other forms of life and non-living materials. Here's an easy way to frustrate this argument when a Christian brings up the second law of thermodynamics. Ask him what the other laws are. When he shrugs and stares into space, you'll know how truly informed he is on the subject. And finally, number 10, our favorite. Adolf Hitler was an atheist. Well, actually, Hitler was raised Roman Catholic. In Mein Kampf, Hitler speaks of the creator of the universe and says the Aryan race was created by God. His religious views, or lack of them, remain in dispute. But using the name of history's greatest tyrant isn't an argument. It's a provocation that has nothing to do with the concept of evolution or creation. Invoking Hitler is a hot button designed to distract people from the true evidence that God only exists in the imagination of man. So there they are, our top 10 favorite creationist arguments. The next time you come up against one of these, just remember that your worldview is based on evidence. Their worldview includes an invisible divine daddy, two naked people and a talking snake, contradictory documents written in the Bronze Age, the wearing of torture devices around one's neck, and bumper stickers that proudly say, seven days without prayer makes one weak. For the record, we're not sure the creationist argument could be much weaker.